Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. This is welcome to Floss Tube number five. I'm Lady Huzzah presents on Floss Tube. I'm Lady Huzzah on Instagram, and I'm here with my friend Sylvia Stecker, who is running with needles and scissors on Instagram and also on you Floss Tube and on my website. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, this is a little bonus video here. Um, Sylvia is visiting me for the weekend and we are just gallivanting around. We're having a wonderful time. Yes, yes. Um, in my last floss tube, I mentioned, or my husband mentioned that he was going to be out of town. So he is actually enjoying a week in Greece with our daughter. I've mentioned before that our daughter lives in, in Germany. He flew over to Germany a few days last Wednesday um, and they had a few days in Germany to get over the jet lag and then they flew to Greece together on Saturday. And so they will be there a week and then he'll spend a few more days in Germany and then find his way home, hopefully. We hope. Um, so <laughs> anyway, good time. <laughs> Sylvia had already had her visit planned with me and it just worked out perfectly. Right. So we have been having a wonderful time shopping, eating, lapping, stitching, you know, all the things that you need to do on a girls right. weekend yes, together. And we really just lovely. had a great time. We had some great um, antiquing mojo the other day that we can... That was a good day. <laughs> that we can go over some of our treasures. And um, it's just been a really wonderful time. So anyway, um, oh, also, this is, this is a good one. Um, we were hoping to catch up with my friend Susan McKenzie who is ready to open up a new shop in Williamsburg, Virginia. A cross-stitch shop. A cross-stitch shop. shop. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited for that. Um, I think it's going to be called Liberty Hill Needleworks. And she's looking to open sometime in the fall, later in the fall. She's been extremely busy this weekend, but we're hoping to squeeze in a little visit with her this afternoon. Right. You know, just to meet up and she can meet Sylvia because Sylvia will be featuring her... Uh, she. Susan, Susan will be mm -hmm. featuring Sylvia's trunk show um, in her shop. So anyway, um, throughout planning our meeting with Susan, yesterday Sylvia and I were talking about her business and how she's only been in business with running with needles and scissors but about a year. Almost a year. November, it'll be sometime in November, it's a year. That's when I released my first two things. So... You know, I started asking Sylvia, you know, I knew that she was starting her business. I knew she was coming up with some wonderful designs. I knew that she was doing all these things, but I didn't really know her whys behind everything. So I decided to do a little interview with Sylvia that you can enjoy here. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. Let's talk about it. Okay. So Sylvia, what made you decide to start your own business? Well, you know... I can't really pinpoint um, exactly when I thought, <clears throat> well, first I was, I was only really interested in doing reproductions. Um, you know, I was living in Germany at the time and uh, Great Britain was still part of the EU. So um, I discovered a number of auction sites and um, was, was monitoring them for a while just to see, you know, how much things were selling for and, and, and whatnot. And came to realize like, boy, there's some really good deals to be had. And so I ventured into bidding on, on samplers and, well, you that know, that opens a rabbit hole. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, and, and the funny thing is though, like sometimes I would just listen to the auctions, you know, there's, uh, some of them have audio with them and it was just so fascinating to see different styles of, of auctioneers, how they did things. But anyways, that's beside the point. Um, and so, you know, shipping was very reasonable. That's why I mentioned they were still part of the EU. So there's a, you know, there's a very reasonable shipping. So I was getting them for quite reasonable shipping and without any import taxes at the time. And then, of course, Brexit happened and I kept praying against it. Like, that does not be fine <laughs> up until I'm done. So, anyways, Brexit, but, in, not Brexit. Yeah, Brexit, in, not Brexit. Um, yeah, and then things got, got quite pricey um, and, and had to pay taxes. But while I was over there, I decided to sort of start investing in, in samplers. And um, my first sampler that I bought was Isabella Lee. Okay. I found it in, in, a, in a Welsh auction and I thought it was so delightful. So that was my first go through and 
and the the lady that I was dealing with uh, was so delightful and so helpful so she really kind of taught me how the whole thing works and and um, so Isabella Lee is the first one that came in the door um, I don't remember what the second one was anymore but I do remember her or and, the third or fourth or the fourth or the, you know the 20th um, but when I got her Oh, she was filthy. She, I mean, I didn't know that samples arrive in sometimes in just disgusting condition. And she was in a frame, but she was completely disgustingly oh, dirty. Wow. Um, and it smelled horrible. <laughs> like old smell? Yeah, or? just just like moldy, old, you know. And so I took her out. And um, anyways, uh, and from the pictures on the auction, I thought this will be straightforward. You know, this will be a nice little straightforward stitch. Then turns out you know it was a little bit more complicated than that and she had over one and she had 10 stitch and she had some something happening with the doorknob on the little house you know that I couldn't oh. figure out and so I was like man <laughs> you know and then she had chain stitch on the windows I didn't see any of that on the auction now I really blow things up when I look at samplers um but so you know yeah she's she's my first and um I love her a lot um she is a delightful delightful sampler and I released her at market I don't have her with me right now but um yeah she's she's a fun one um but how I really was inspired to start I don't I honestly don't know how I got that wild hair I know I was talking to Michelle well and there's uh, a bunny there's a hair in your logo too. right 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 um I don't know, you know, I know I was, I was talking about it and some, and at some point or another, I'm not all, honestly that much of a talker in terms of when I think I'm going to do something, I'm a talker, but you know, <laughs> it's like, I don't talk for a long time about stuff. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I just go forward, you know, and, oh, and right. yeah, that's you, what I meant. I don't talk a lot about, and haw over no, I don't, just, you know, it's like, it's decisive. like, if I'm going to say I'm going to do it, then off I go, you know, and, and I tend to get very focused and, and, um, uh, ambitious about things. So, um, off I went, you know, I had, I made a plan. I sort of curated my things accordingly and, and, um, you know, just went forward with it. I knew that while I was working, uh, you know, close to full time, I'd have to budget in a long prep period. Cause I said I wanted to go to market. And so that was sort of my, my, I was working towards that for a good, almost year and a half, you know, prior to, to the market that I went to, to where I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do, you know, and, and so I just was knocking them out one after the other. Um, That's great. Yeah. I mean, you really, you really have done a terrific job with that. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an adventure and it's been, it's been so fun. And I think it's uh, been such a privilege really that, that I, I get to do this. Um, you must get a real thrill when you see on Instagram or Facebook or someone showing your piece that they have stitched. It's like one of your babies is growing up. Right, and it's, right. And it's it's so fun to see the creativity that people have. You know, I am just always thrilled uh, to see them do some, you know, take my pattern and, and make their own out of it. You know, really personalize it. And, and whether they go with a very bold fabric choice, like um, inspired by Michelle Ray, I think is her name on Instagram. That... She stitched my beloved, but just the bird part on Envy, I think it is, from Fibers on a Whim. I'm not familiar with that linen. What does that It's called? like a teal green. Oh. Holy goodness. cow, does that look good. You know, and I wow. would have never done it. And there's somebody else, and I'm sorry I don't have the name. She's doing it on some brownish raspberry color. And it looks so fall. Wow. Right? It really brings out the fall vibe in that That's sampler. Cool. And I, I just, I just you know, I love it. And the other thing that I totally geek out over is when I do have a trunk show and somewhere, you know, and I'm like, oh, look, you know, my samplers are in the wild. And, you know, like I see them in a new habitats, basically. And, and uh, you know, it's just a thrill and it's 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 so much fun. Um, and sometimes I just stand there and say, I can't believe that's, you know, I can't believe that's my stuff. Like, right. who is that? You know? Right. So, anyways, it's like I said, I feel very privileged and, and honored that I get to do this. this it's is very, a, yeah. it's very thrilling. Yeah. So what made you decide on your name of your business? Oh, yeah, that goes back uh, a ways. So when I first got to Germany, I, we moved over to Germany in 2009 and we were doing quite a bit of traveling. And since I was a stitcher, 
I came up with the name Running With Needles and Scissors because it was sort of like I'm running around Europe with my needles and scissors because I was always taking stitching along. And, and so I had a blog. Don't go back there and look at it, please. Because it's still, I mean, you know, they never go away. No, I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> there is an amusing read where I detail the, uh, the like, the differences, like, what surprised me about, about when I got to Germany and the things they do there. You right. know, that was a good, that was a good post. But um, <clears throat> anyways, um, so, and then I got interested in running, running, and I, I started trail running, um, and I lost a ton of weight. It was really great, but Hopefully not with your scissors. No, but you know, so I'm, I'm trail running, and I'm doing all these running things, and you know, so I was still running with needles and scissors, and then, um, you know, since I had that all this, all these years, I just... Yeah, I felt it was appropriate to continue on with my business as That's running great. with needles it's, and scissors. It's perfect, and your logo mm -hmm. is just adorable. So my know? logo was funny. I was, you know, I we were kind of asking around somebody who could do. It. I had a vision for it, you know, and and um, my husband just happened to have somebody that he works with that does a little bit of that, and so he took it upon himself. He's such a great, you know, that was so great of him to ask this guy and so I get this email with this logo attached and it was not at all you know what I was I was like oh no um <laughs> it's a nice gesture <laughs> well, a nice gesture but no it was sort of a, like a cartoon bunny you know I don't know what he was doing um so I I sent a few sketches of a hair rabbit back I said I'm looking more for you know in the vibe of this and not bugs bunny <laughs> right I mean you know <laughs> and so I back came the bunny the way it is now i mean it was like boom like that and i'm that's like great. yes he that's it. it he, he got, got it, it right it away and he gave me this fabulous bunny you know and when you look closely you see that he has a needle in one hand and a little yes, scissor in yes. the other and so one of these days i'm going to design him and and stitch him up so i might get some needle minders made oh that'd be uh, that's a great idea that is a great get some needle idea made. get that merch girl <laughs> anyways coming soon <laughs> Needleminders. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I have sort of, I have business card or, or like thank you cards that I, I send or I put my um, correspondence on uh, to people. And it is just the, the, the slightest peachy pink tint on right. it. You know, it's not, it's, you really have to, kind of, but then the, the, the brown logo looks right. really, really nice on it. So, um, Anyway, well, that's a side, that's but great. Yeah, I love it. I love my name, uh, except that when I have when somebody asks me for my email, and they have to put it in the computer. A huge I'm, long. I'm always apologizing. Like, I'm sorry, it's so long. You yeah, know. It's <laughs> so well, that's great. Well, I know that when you started, you were doing reproductions, right? Although you did come out with your um, Noel button. Noel button. Do you want to hear the inspiration for that? Sure, and then I have another question for you. Okay, you know so, I'm not at a loss for words. No, ever. no, well, you know, we're two peas in the pod. We're like sisters. No, and you know, so many people think we're sisters. Yeah, I know, and we are totally cool with that. You might, it's great. Right, right. I think maybe we are sisters. We just didn't grow up together. Right, right. Well, there's so many parallels, which we will talk about at some point or another. Uh, which we always, we you know, it's like when we talk something, we saw like, something. Oh my like, god, me too. You know. <laughs> so, but we'll talk about that maybe later on. Um, so Noel Buttons, so I'll, you know, um, Lori Holt had done, and I hadn't seen that video, but Lisa was talking about it, about a sampler in a jar. She was doing stitching little sampler motifs yeah. on buttons and throwing them in a jar. Well, I was contemplating what to do for Lisa for Christmas. And I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll stitch. Yeah, that, that was, was you. It was, present. it was. Um, I said, I'm going to stitch um you know the word noel in different fonts and then i was sort of contemplating i found a little um from hallmark a little house that had little christmas ornaments little tiny christmas ornaments hanging in it and i was like out with the christmas ornaments i'm going to finish it in buttons like little ornaments and hang them in there and they'll spell noel right okay Okay, well, then forgot that, that house. No, you didn't get that house. It's, it's you know, it's, well, you know, because I, I came up with, and so as I was, you know, I, I do a lot of contemplating before I go to bed or walking, you know, my mind, I just let my mind go and, and um, that's where, where some of the creative stuff comes from. And all of a sudden I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll find something to set them in, you know, so that she can put it on the counter. Well, 
I kept looking at Goodwill, like, can I find something? Da, 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 da. And then, you know, so I'm like, I know what I'll do. I'll put him in a Scrabble tile holder. And so that's where the inf inspiration for I Noel came that. from. That makes it even more special. I know. And that's I was great. going to uh, stitch it for you. Oh. I <laughs> well, it was going to be a present, you know. It wasn't going to. So I got the kit. Instead, she got the kit. I stitched my own. Here you go. <laughs> Anyways, so that was the that was the start of the button series. Here's the here's my muse. <laughs> Cute as a button. Right? So oh, yes, that's cool. I didn't yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And then of course I did Janet Scott, um, which the Colorado Cross Stitcher sh just showed on her video, uh, Sherry, and thank you for that. Um, as a she heard that my Janet Scott was an example of a cool sample because just cool right. colors and. It's a really lovely little sampler with um, greens. I think it's red. three greens, one red, and a little bit of black is in there. And so I felt, and they have the little, you know, it has little trees at the bottom. So I, I kind of felt like it was a nice, nice Christmas uh, thing, but can stay out all year long. So that I released last year. But that's November. a reproduction. That is a reproduction. Yes. And little Janet has 16 legs, uh, eyelets. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was doing a lot of eyelets for a while. I'm like, Janet, what's with the 16 legs? That's not one of my favorite stitches, but I'll, I love I'll eyelets. persevere. I'll, I love eyelets. So other than doing the Noel, were you, when you started your business, were you pretty much just looking to do reproductions or do you always have in mind that you wanted to have your own original designs? Because now you do. Right. No, was it was that just reproductions. That, but, so, but the original designs have just sort of yes. popped out of your head? Yes, because when I first started, I was like... I got nothing. I am not a creative person. You know, there's nothing in here in me like, yes, you know, shake, right. shake, shake the bank. There was nothing in there. I'm like, I don't know. You know, I, I, got, well, I got the Noel buttons, um, but that, but I, you know, thought about that for a long time. I mean, it just came out, you know, in little bits and pieces. Well, now, because I was just talking to you about like, oh, this thing and, you know, this theme right. and that, and that's what, this is what I want it to look like. I think, you know, it's a matter of when you're, you engage your mind, you know, in, in certain areas and it opens I, up to more things. Right. And so I was like, Hey, I did not know I had all this creativity in me. Like the, the, um, tombstone angels, the needlework right. tombstone angels, right? Where did that come from? You know, where the patriotic set or your butterfly right, lady. Right. So where did that come from? And it's just something like I would say, well, I have to relax my brain a little bit. Right. You know, and then things just start popping up. But I really, really think it's just where you're directing your mental energies to. That's great. You know? That's great. And I love how you bounce things bounce things off of me. Like, what do you think of this? Yeah. <laughs> well, like you did with your acorn. Okay. Sylvia did her acorn buttons. I think I touched on this a little bit in my floss tube, but she was showing me this design about her acorn buttons. Um, you know, spelling out the word acorn. I like sent her the, the pat, yeah, like the, the pattern. Word. So you could, you know, I'm like, what do you think of this? You know? And I said, Oh, I love it. I can't wait to stitch it. And she's like, well, your wish can granted. come true. <laughs> like your fairy godmother, your wish is granted. You can stitch it. I'll send you my model. It's in stitch. the mail. Stitch it for me. I said, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> so, and well, tell them about your acorn because I kind of just brushed over it in my floss tube about mm -hmm. how charming each of those buttons really is. And then, um, yes. I don't think you really mentioned that when you I didn't need, about I didn't yours. really go over in either. In the meantime, I have to run downstairs for something. So okay. I'll be right so the funny thing was like yesterday, um, let me come closer. Well, there's my finger in the way. Okay. Yesterday, we had a stitching friend over and she was looking at him. She goes, I didn't even realize this was in there. So the A has a little squirrel in it. The C has little oak leaves. Of course, then we have our acorn. And then we have a little fall blooming flower in the R right there. And then here we have a little pumpkin. So, um, yeah, I kind of... Um, expanded my creativity in these buttons you know and some of these letters some of these letters yet. I I come up with by myself you know some of them are adapted from alphabets um so it's just a mix of and then you know try and get a fit to the right fit on the button itself so everything does 
it has an element right. of originality in it. And then when I stitched it, um, it was go. a variegated flaw, a variegated silk. Right. What I Fall did foliage. was I manipulated the colors so that the little pumpkin was stitched in more of the rust right. or orange right. color. Yeah, and, you know. So. Uh, so this is done with Gloriana Fall Foliage foliage and the pattern does come with enough silk to stitch the buttons. The buttons are so easy. Now I'm not a finisher. Lisa will testify to that, that, you know, I am not a finisher. Um, but this is so easy to finish and, um, really you don't have to be a finisher at all. You just have to stick your design in the mold, stick the button on top, the button form. It's a, it's a see-through mold. So you can sort of make sure that your right. your letter is sitting properly. You cut down your linen, you fold it in, you put the back on, you push it down, and you are done. Lisa had me um, put some iron interfacing on the buttons. And I'll talk more about that yeah, later when yeah. we get to tips She just didn't tricks. want the silver, since it's her mom, you know, it's her thing. She didn't want the silver to show through, and that was a good idea. And the feather weight, it really doesn't distort the holes in the linen then. Sometimes when you're making the buttons, it kind of pulls some of the threads. Well, it's a tight, right. it's yeah, a tight, tight you know, right. the, the point of these, these buttons is, or, you know, like the material is very, very tightly. Uh, right. Pulled. That's what the mold does when you stick it in. It just, you know, uh, right. molds to the to the button very nicely. So, anyways, show some of your other. Are well, you ready to show some of your? Yeah, other? yeah. Um, I think so. I just the only models I have with are the most recent ones because my other models are happily being displayed in a shop and they'll send it over. Right, but I have these show. models so that my yeah. friend can have them in her shop when she's ready to have Sylvia's trunk show. So she just decided to so, show a few things. Yeah, no, I wanted to talk a little bit about like what do I what what you look for in a sampler. Right. That's when I when other. I bid on things, you know, what what do I look for in a sampler? Um I look for something that appeals to me, of course, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And that it it's, it can be quirky and a little different right. and, you know, um, elements that you don't often see. Right. Right. And so I think when you, when you, um, look at my vast, <laughs> no, <laughs> when you look at my, my patterns or models, you will see that I'm, I'm trying to, you know, have a little bit of a, of a, of a different, a, not approach, but Again, I, I I tend to go quirky, a little right. quirkier, you know, and, and I think I love that uh, it's sort of an expression from these girls, you know, it's right. like their little, I'm going to do it this way, you right. know, and, and so, um, but I need to run for something. Go, else. go, go. <laughs> so here is Caroline, the Inno Caroline, the innocence of uh, childhood. Now, this one was stitched on a teeny tiny thread count by Diane my model stitcher, and nobody can have her. She's mine, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, this is on uneven weave, uh, 5363 count, stitched with um, Tudor silk, uh, antique black, Gloriana. Uh, so what attracted me to this was just the simplicity of it, the elegance of it, and... Um, yeah, I, I just thought well, it was a fabulous sampler. The original is even smaller than this, so reproducing it was quite the chore. And I really like the sort of the free-handed wreath on here. And and I tend to go for samplers that are very densely stitched. That just appeals to me. And this was completely different. And so, um, yeah, I do. I really do like this. And and sometimes it's I find it interesting that I'll break out of my my uh um normal you know right. like like again like i like my my samplers dense right and this one isn't and um yeah i just you know this this really we spent a good amount of time in paris and it just reminds me of paris you know right. so so that you know maybe it'll evoke a feeling in me and i'm like oh yeah right. i love that you know and and, and it'll be stitching the middle medallion and making oh, an ornament it, or a yeah. pin keep or something or, or for someone's a, a box topper, or you know, something like that is let me get Very close sweet. to it. Anyways, so yeah, it's it's I love this one. This one is my pride and joy right right at the moment. The one that I'm gonna fit, you know stitch for market is gonna be my pride and joy after <laughs> yeah. so so what appealed to me about 
this sampler, which is um, Mag Magdalena Beal, I think is her name, uh, Vanderbeel. Uh, of course, was the house. The house was fabulous. And then the blue, just the blue in, in these things, that was, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta have it. And I, I got this at a Dutch auction um, they took the frame off when they sent it. I didn't even have a, a say in it, but, um, cuts down uh, on shipping. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just love this house. Love. It's the biggest house I ever stitched. And now no house intimidates me anymore. And you, you know, know, that filling in stitching can really be very meditative and it's great if you're in a group of stitchers right. that you don't want to be making mistakes. You just fill it in. Right. And then I thought uh, the border was really charming. All the little, there's little violets uh, and then just regular little flowers in all the different colors. And I felt it was, you know, just great. And then again, I love the pear and I love the apple. I mean, just, you know, just yes. so just things that, that, maybe don't crop up on every sampler, you know, and, and, um, and this is, you know, much more traditional, uh, you know, big house and, and, right. and motifs, but, um, well, I, I, just have love this one. Oh, I have a question for you. How much, when you are looking to purchase, well, this is double sided question. How do you find your samplers mm -hmm. and how much thread loss are you willing to accept in a sampler that you purchase? Okay. So I, I look, on various places. There are auction sites. There are, you know, eBay. Um, you got to know your seller uh, in terms of eBay. Um, oh, um, I found some on Marketplace. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't leave any stones unturned, to be honest. I look all always, the time. I'm always envious of the people that say, I got this for four ninety nine at Goodwill. <laughs> I haven't found a sample. I Goodwill haven't been that lucky, but we're but going to Goodwill later on yeah, today. I, Somehow, I, I'm thinking though that our Williamsburg Goodwill may not produce a sampler. <laughs> maybe not a sampler. Um, thread loss. Well, so I am not in the market to buy really expensive samplers. So mine will likelihood have thread loss, linen loss, uh, staining, um, discoloration, stink, stink. <laughs> they're dirty. You know, I mean, I I've had it to where when I've gotten it out of the out of the frame, my my hands, my fingers are brown, dirty brown. You know, and I'm like, I can't work with that. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, <clears throat> so. Yes, there are times when, when it depends on the sampler, I will be honest, you know, and how badly I want it. And what price. I'm going, yeah, and price, how, what I'm willing to, to compromise on, right. let's say, right? Um, so, yeah, it, it, it really, really it's depends. Just tough. It right? Just depends and, on and, and I have some where there is, and I knew this, a good amount of thread loss, you know, and I'm like, okay, I, I think I can still work with it. Um, and there's some that, you know, are, are really great, but, but quite discolored. And I'm like, well, right. that's, you know, then I have to draw on my own experience and right, creativity right, right. to make that work. Um, don't have much experience. So it's more my, 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 fa my, my color sense or, you know, whatever, um, that, that I then work with. Um, yeah, so it, it really, really depends on the sampler and what I see in terms of what I'm willing to pay. Again, it depends on the sampler. But I'm pretty conservative in terms of what I'm willing to pay for my samplers. Um, I don't necessarily invest a lot of money into them. And I really, really currently my, I think I have one, possibly two samplers that I bought for me, knowing full and well that it would not be an easy reproduction if I was going to reproduce or I couldn't reproduce it at all. Um, I think I've only had one or two that I bought that way saying, I really, really just want to have it. Right. Um, just for you. Just for me because it gives me joy. Are they framed? Yes. Oh, cool. Yes, That's they're good. framed. They're framed. Um, so I have, you know, they come in a variety, you know, they come framed or unframed or the frame, it gets damaged or it is damaged or it's super loose and, you know, they're ready to fall out. Um, so I do save all the frames when I take them out because eventually they need to go back into their frame. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but this is sort of my intuition that the sampler in terms of worth, which I'm not too concerned about, but in terms of worth is, 
it's important to keep the original frame oh, and get okay. it back into its original frame if possible, if possible. Um, so good to know. Yeah. Because sometimes like when, when I, I've purchased a sampler and I check on shipping or I try to do it beforehand so I don't get, you know, totally surprised and it's pretty high and the next one comes and it's quite reasonable. And I'm like, why? Yeah. Well, when it comes, you'll know, because that frame <laughs> is huge and heavy. I mean, there's sometimes, you know, they're, they're this wide, oh, they're the solid wide, wood, you know, and that molding. has to be paid yes, for. Yes, yeah. And they're yes. usually not like fancy moldings. They're usually very plain, chunky frames, you know, that, that went on at times. Well, in my price range, right, okay. <laughs> in the higher price range, I'm sure there, there, there's fancy, fancy frames on them, but my price range looks like they, they, um, you know, rough hued a, a piece of wood and made a frame out but, of it. But I mean, that's what they had available to frame right, it in. And right. Some of your samplers are pretty old, so that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have so, the modern technology to do the frames they have today. Right, right. And I think it is it is an important also consideration sometimes in terms of is the sampler framed in its original frame or not? Um, cause, and, or is it framed at all? Um, there's a lot of clues you can get from the frame in the back, you know, like right. sometimes the framer is on there. Like it, it might've been reframed a hundred years prior. Right? right. And so you at least get a sense of where it's from. Right. Uh, sometimes you find things in tucked in there when you, when you take it apart. Yes. People so, have, I've seen that people have shown sometimes there's documents, right, there's, right. you know, a piece of board or something that has writing on that was repurposed for something right. repurposed from something yeah. else. It's that super interesting clues, to newspaper. Yeah. Right. You know, and you can tell a lot of times that the, the samplers in its original frame because of the nails. That okay. were used. They have the little right. square headed nails, you know, and, and, uh, I've started just saving them. If I can get them out straight, I'll save oh, them cool. and maybe use them again one of these days. So I have a little, I love a little jar of, of these nails. handmade square headed nails, which are, which are really cool. So that's, you know, I love Adam and Eve's, right? Oh. You know, I can hardly pass up an Adam and Eve if, if I find it interesting and quirky. I just got one, um, that is very dense, very densely stitched, but you know, I haven't seen that, but they have little people tucked in the, like next to the motifs. They stitched little oh, men and people. women, you know, down here's the Adam well, and Eve. And the I, population started. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The offspring is tucked in, uh, but they're like colonial people. Oh. Oh. <laughs> There's my naked Adam and Eve. And then, you know, we have little colonial Time people. Time travel. Right, right. Tucked in. <laughs> Truth in advance. Um, you know, and that appealed to me and I bid on it and bought it. Um, cause I've never seen like That's little cool. people That's strewn cool. about the, you know, have to do, send me a picture of that. Yeah, I will. So, um, you know, of course red houses, who doesn't love a red house or a house in general, a house, you right. know? Uh, so yes, if it's a good house and has interesting things around it, or it's just That's very great. charming scene, you know, I might be tempted to, to Suck bid on it, <laughs> but I, I, you know, of course, you know, sometimes I see something that is just like, Oh, I want to bid on that, you know, and, and I'm out within two seconds because right. it's gone beyond what I'm going to pay for it. You know, I'm like, Oh God. So, um, so what else do you have over there? Well, the, the, uh, last thing I have here, well, we have the other right. one is my, um, may thy needles rest in peace, which my friend here, all of a sudden we were chatting and all of a sudden she goes, I got a title for your tombstones. And that came to for her, her so, series. Yeah, my his... series. So it's going to be a series of tombstones. And, you know, really, it's not a Halloween-y thing. I think they could be finished differently um, and and really be very appealing. Right. Um, so this is the first one. It's called Evelyn Eilet. Oh, let me come a little closer. And she was a maker of samplers. There's a little S tucked in there because, you know, we ran out of room. And the verse says, I have to read it. Her life was told with linen and thread. They speak still, though she be dead. And I have um, probably about five more sayings that uh, that uh, I I came up with. And, you know, I'm trying to do the names also that they sort of have a, a sewing stitching connection. Anyway, so here's the first one. Um, the board was done by April from Homestead. April Whitaker. April Whitaker. Is it Homestead Needlework? Yes. Yes. 
So she has fabulous boards. She has a shop on Etsy. Right. And she just did a post. If you don't follow her, April in Alabama, is, she's in, in, uh, um, on Instagram. She was showing like how she gets her wood. I didn't know. She she's cuts, amazing. She cuts down her own trees they put on, on the property, whatever, you know. She's and then the, like they, the real deal. Right. Yeah, you know, this is hers from start to finish. She cures that wood. M mills the wood, cures really? the wood. Oh, I didn't realize yeah, that. it's all on. It's her last post on on oh, Instagram, and I was just like, "That is amazing." I mean, she says she owns a chainsaw, and she cut that tree down, wow. which is you got to be skilled. You yes, know, that you is do. not without. If they uh, fall the way, very the dangerous. Way, you're very toast. dangerous to log <laughs> trees, and so she was showing, and then they they stack it and cure it and mill it, and you know, on that's to dry, um, and she produces. Various boards, really, really nice boards. They're super high quality. I and so she made this one for me. I told her what I was looking for, and she made it. And so, uh, just a, a little little thing. Next one, looks this way. So they're not all going to be. I mean, not with this. You know, it's going to have the top. Um, they're not all going to be the, the same. same. And but they'll all be connected. And they're not all going to be on the same linen. This linen is. Well, just like no tombstone is really the same. Right. So, you know, and so I'm thinking of the, this shape and then maybe a tall, narrow one, you know, all kinds. And so um, we'll see. I just have to play around with right. it. So that is May Thy Needle Rest in Peace or Needles, right? Anyways, uh, Evelyn Islet. That's number one. Number two and three hopefully will come at the national market. Um, and Somebody raised their hand kindly and said they would stitch one of That's them. That's right. <laughs> um, so Lisa is currently stitching the I Love You More than when I said I do. Since my husband is out of town and I don't think he'll watch this anytime soon, um, I decided to stitch this for us for our anniversary. We celebrate 33 years of marriage in November. So I started stitching this. I'm stitching it on 36 count Inca from Fox and Rabbit. Right. And this is stitched on 40 count sand from Picture This Plus. And it looks very green, but it's not it's not that green at all. It does have a little bit of green uh, uh, modeling on it, but it, oh, it does look very green. Well, anyways. <laughs> Mine has, well, show my piece. I've, I, oh, started, yeah. I started it yesterday. Let's move all this over. Yesterday, day before maybe yesterday. night before. Yeah, day before yesterday. I'm so, not that fast. <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna lay it over this. Oh, excuse the wrinkles. Anyway, so this is where it's also very crooked. Sorry. Okay, this is where Lisa is at, and we've had an interesting journey um, on this, and Lisa will talk a little bit more about it. So let me just drop it. The well, upside down. Okay. So you can see sort of what what we got going here. Okay, Sylvia and I were talking a lot about um, color. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were watching Colorado Cross right. Stitchers Floss Tube too, and it really kind of reinforced, you know, her talk about color. If you haven't watched it, you should watch um, Sherry's most recent, recent one, yeah. Floss Tube. It was great, but you know, it's, Things have kind of evolved over the years. Back when I've been stitching since I've been in, oh, I've always, I can't remember not stitching, really but I started time, stitching, right? cross stitching when I was um, a senior in high school, um, which that is was not what, that long ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but anyway, it used to be if something was charted with DMC, people only used DMC. Mm -hmm. And then when the over dye cottons came out, Rarely did you see any designers mixing DMC and the overdyes. Same as with silks. You would rarely see a piece that was stitched in a mix of silks or overdyes or adding DMC to it. Now you see the designers really reaching out and kind of anything goes. Whatever fibers they select to use, that's what they use. And it's really, it's really nice. It really adds to the creativity of a piece and really enhancing yourself as a stitcher that you become very versatile in the materials that you use kind of like a painter using many different painting techniques and media mixed media yeah mm -hmm. right so anyway i i'm stitching mine on the inca it's kind of hard to see but mine has some sort of reddish or purpler purpley 
modeling in here, which I thought was nice because there is grapes that will be stitched in this, mm -hmm. on this vine. And I thought it kind of, you know, enhanced those grapes. But what we found, and I think it comes to the frustration of a lot of stitchers, is that there's such a die lot discrepancy. For instance, I started stitching, I started stitching in the center and I started the little green leaves between the top two blue flowers, okay? Well, it was a good thing Sylvia had her model here because the color that was called for was shutter green. Well, there's my shutter green and Sylvia's shutter green. Right. Mine's a much more blue green. Much darker. Right. And much darker. So I went through my stash of threads and I did find a shutter green that um, was more like Sylvia's shutter green. But look at the difference between this. It's crazy. Those are both shutter green. Right. So I selected the darker one from my stash to use. Okay, so then the next thing I was stitching <laughs> was the little flowers. Which is also her dress, right? Yes. The same color as in her dress. So, and that's in Classic Color Works Green, Green Onion. Onion. It was so light, you could barely see it on my linen. Um, so, I went over to the DMC. I took the DMC 927. And it showed up a lot better. Never be, never be afraid to change a color um, for a lot of reasons. To have it show up if you have using a different linen. Because you can't always find the linens that the models are stitched on. And there's no reason under the sun for you not to select something else. Some people don't like to vary from that. But really, go for it. There's no reason not to. Yeah, let me just throw in that as a person who designs, you know, I work with what I have, just like stitchers, you know, sometimes have to work with what they have. So, you know, what works on my linen may not work on your linen. What, you know, I've, I've worked with an antique. And so I try to get as close as possible, if, po you know, if it's even possible mm -hmm. to what I'm seeing front or back. Um, and, you know, I don't have a degree in color theory or anything like that. So it's just what my eye or what I think it needs to be. But that doesn't mean, like like Sherry, the Colorado cross stitcher says, please, you know, if it doesn't, if you like really dark grape leaves on the grapevine, you know, make it dark. There is no reason right. why. And I know that people say, some, some stitchers are like, well, I want it to look just like the model. First of all, it's a photo. And Photos you don't do always get the accurate, right. Second of all, a lot of things are hand dyed. You will highly likely not get the same look as the model. You may get close, but it you may get the different dye lot like like Lisa did, you know, what whatever. So I would just say that's a great guide, <laughs> you know, what, what the designer did. But, you know, I mean, it's freeing. It's very, very freeing when you're like, well, I want it a little darker than that. Well, yeah. I like I like the color pink. I'm going to do pink in mine instead right. of red. Or if you, you want to make the dress pink. Instead right, of right, put... right. So the other discrepancy was, okay, so going back to this was the shutter green I had. The other green that Sylvia had in this was avocado. Well, my the avocado that I got in the shutter green are very, very close. close. Yeah. So I went ahead and changed out the avocado also. And I really don't know what this gentle art color is, but I went with limited edition for my vine. So it's all coming together quite nicely and I'm very pleased with it and will be delighted to have it finished. Hopefully if I get some stitching time in, I can have it stitched before my husband gets home from his trip. Although he sees me stitching, but he's not often like, hey, what are you working on? <laughs> Let me see. Ooh. Oh, that's beautiful. Let me enjoy it. Yeah. So I really don't have a danger of him finding out about it if he, if I'm stitching it in plain sight. Right. But it's a very quick stitch. It's lovely. It's a lovely tribute to our love and our marriage for all these years. So anyway... Um, I guess that's that. Yeah. That's... And I just wanted to say that that this one I did stitch. Oh, I just 
little purple thread on there. I did stitch for our 35th wedding anniversary. So that was this year and I felt it was, it was perfect. Now I, these come, these motifs come from an antique that I'm working on now. It's a huge antique. Um, and so you will see these sweet people again. And, um, you know, when I, when I finally found the linen I was going to work on for the big antique, um, I've made color changes to like, like the shutter green is no longer in there uh, because this antique has, I don't know, six, seven greens. And right. so in order to get close to what they were saying and, uh, or what I was seeing, um, I had to, you know, switch, made some adjustments right. on, on the green. So yeah, so that happens also. Same. And I'm not concerned about it, honestly. Um, so. so there's one other thing I want to show of Sylvia's. This arrived um, in my mail the day that she arrived. So yeah. I was thrilled to show it to her because I don't think I've I have seen not it as seen a full kit. A, a, as a kit. Yeah, of course I've seen the pattern because I produced it, but um, yeah, so, as a kit, I haven't seen it yet. So it was really So fun to see. this was something that's been kind of tucked away for a year, over a year. Oh yeah, yeah. Last year when we read Country Sampler, Jeannie Horton, owner of Country Sampler, delightfully asked Sylvia if she could be her opener for her club, for her Threads of History club for this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're aware, but Jeannie has a wonderful sampler club. Um, you get quarterly samplers, kits, and she's really great at showcasing designers, new and really seasoned designers yeah, that have been in the industry them, for a yeah. long time. Mm -hmm. She mixes it up, but Sylvia was thrilled that Jeannie selected one of her samplers for Sylvia to reproduce to um, introduced as the first one for her club for this year. So I am a member of that club and I was just tickled to get my kit in the mail the other day. Oh, it's, it's not, oh. A, I'll take the yeah, back. You know what? Crunching never bothers me. It's <laughs> the anticipation of what you're about to show. I love, I love the crunch. It's like a Pavlovian response. I, I do. It's I like love something good is coming. <laughs> so this is Milady's Courting Conundrum. Which we also worked on the name together because yes, I was because like, this little lady has a decision to make because she has two handsome gents <laughs> after <laughs> her, vying for her lovely attentions. And her house, because that's and her house. Her, yes. <laughs> so anyway, it's delightful. This is stitched on 36 count heirloom by Needle Bling Designs. And it's using Classic Color Works, DMC, and Weeks Dye Works. Mm -hmm. So... I get my kit in 36 count. Um, you can you can join the club with 36 or 40 count, but look at this lusciousness. These are all the threads and Country Scooted Sampler. There, yeah. Country yeah, yeah. Sampler always presents yeah. just a wonderful kit. Yeah. It makes you want to pull out your needle and dive right into it immediately. Yes. I wanted to stitch it again when right. I saw it. I was so, like, oh, maybe I want to do it. In addition <clears> to the sampler, I don't know if you saw them, but there's also smalls down below to stitch. Now, um, these are just ideas of finishing your your smalls, but they can be finished any in any way you want. I think instead of the pocket, I'm going to use that house and offset it on the side of a project bag that I make. But this is so, I was so thrilled to receive this in the mail and it was really lovely for Jeannie to, um, you know, take a chance. I mean, it was, it was, she Sylvia did take a chance on me. she started the journey of her. Uh, because I hadn't even come out with anything, zero. Right. And she was like, oh, I would like you to do that sampler for us. And, you know, it was like, I felt like, uh, you know, I wasn't even in the minor leagues, but I'd been immediately called up to the she major was a leagues. Peewee. You know, I mean, that was a pee. -wee. Well, I was a pee ball. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, uh, uh, uh. and uh, so you know, I am really, really grateful for for that opportunity, and I'm glad that you know I sort of hit the. You know, it wasn't yeah. like yeah, I, I hit the. You know, I'm I'm I don't want to. Well, anyways, it was just it. I'm just glad that it is what it is, right? You know, because I was very nervous about it, um, and we kept that under wraps. I mean, here I knew this little bit of info right. about it and right. I kept it under wraps for a year. Right. So that was, that was great. Yeah. So was... proud of you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, so, and it... you can see it on, um, Jeannie's, Jeannie sends out a newsletter, newsletter. Mm -hmm. and Sylvia's, um, kit is 
featured in the newsletter. It's there, you know, with other designs that Jeannie is showing. And now I don't know whether there's any space in the club for this year to still obtain this kit. I have no idea what inventory of it Jeannie has. Right. But certainly it's worth joining the club, you know, for another year. Or maybe you can hop in for the next for the next design that's coming out. I think she did write in her newsletter, in her latest newsletter, that she was adding people to the club. Um, so I think there's just a smidge of room in okay. there. You know, and, but it's and, Country Sampler in Spring mm -hmm. Green, Wisconsin. Make sure if you search it, you search Country Sampler Spring, Spring Green, Green because there's also else. Country Sampler Magazine. And I believe there's also some stores just named Country Sampler yeah, that yeah. sell like primitive and country. I mean, you might find things. something great if you just Google Country Sampler. Right, but <laughs> Look at but the it's Country sites, Sampler yeah. Spring Green yeah. and um, totally worth it. I'm so excited. You know, I've got Sylvia Goes Home tomorrow and I have the rest of the week here by myself. I do have to work three days. That's why I'm not in Greece oh. also. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, I, I hope to get my needle into that at yeah. some point, even to just to stitch a little smidge because I have to, I'll tell you a secret. I'm getting ready to stitch something for my friend's birthday. She has a my good big one. Old, big old hey, did up. any of you order her birthday kit sampler? A lot of people ordered but my birthday kit. Real quick, tell them about your download that, that yeah, they can so, do. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't have a pic. I mean, I don't have it with me or anything like that. But I reproduced a really charming sampler. And I looked long and hard for one that would be stitchable by all people, you know, uh, it's just cross stitch that would be, again, a little unique and quirky. Um, and I think I did, I think I did find one. And, and so um, I reproduced it. I offered kits, but that is closed. Um, but you can download it for free. Now the kit people will get their pattern printed in, in the kit. So, but if you want to download it for free and I will have it on my Instagram, people that are signed up for the newsletter through the website, running with needles and scissors, uh, you can just type in www.rwna. So you just use initials. So you don't have to type the whole thing and you'll, you'll, you'll get to my website, but you can sign up for the newsletter and I will remind people because it's on my birthday. You can download this sampler we'll for free, date. which is November 20th. Um, I have to get stitching on her birthday present. <laughs> oh, we were sitting downstairs talking and she's like, well, I have a friend. I have to do some stitching for a friend who has a really big birthday coming up. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't even like, and then she gives me that, you know, like the little Lisa grin. And I was like, oh, she means me. <laughs> I can't start working on it now. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's a fun, you know, it's a 60th birthday. It's, it's a pretty big birthday. And, and, um, uh, the kit is is going to, again, the kit is not going to ship out until early November, just because I have to wait on the linen. Um, I think everything else has come already. But that's so a exciting. great opportunity for a free download. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I, you know, hey, you know, cost you nothing to free download it for free. So you know, your birthday gift, it's your party favor for yes, everybody. Yes, it is. It is. So it's uh, only on that day? Only on that day. Only on that day. Okay. And this sampler, I am... Please put out a little reminder on I Instagram. Am. Okay. I am. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Follow me on Instagram. Sign up for the newsletter because I will remind you... That I will remind you the day before, I will remind you the day off. So you can get two emails from me if you're on the newsletter. Not the day after. <laughs> you're like, oh, did anybody? No. And then, but this sampler is not going to be released anytime soon. Like, I mean, it's going to be tucked away probably for the next three to four years or something nice. like that. Because it is a freebie and, um, you know, I just want to keep it that, you know, you I just wanted to keep it very special. And, and so, and. If I say three to four years, I may not release it at all. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. That's you know? great. And so it is It is a, my free gift, my thank you, because this community has so, I mean, it's just been mind-blowingly great, right. you know, and so I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm a slow producer. I'm a slow designer. I'm a slow stitcher. The only thing I do is talk fast. And um, so I'm not like, pumping out a lot of freebies right you know and how often do you like to release designs oh good question um well i'm sort of tied into the the show schedule okay. right so it's it's nashville it's um the online market and uh, you know right before fall 
And really, because it is a significant financial investment, a lot of times you want to come in with a certain amount of work that you're releasing in order to make it even worthwhile, you know, to, to do it. So those are the two major time periods that I'm working towards. Um, I do have Christmas releases coming, okay, so cool. they're almost ready to go. And so this year it was March for Nashville, a little bit in the summer, some patriotic okay. stuff. April, uh, August for the online show and now Christmas. So I probably will continue sort of that right. cool. at least right now, you know, that's, I can't work any faster than that. So, okay. um, so the next, like I said, Christmas is coming and then yeah, Christmas is like two months away. I know. It's crazy. So my, my things will probably be released early November. Okay. Uh -huh. And, you... and then, um, then it's just full bore, on to to nashville great um and uh so. and after that you know it's right into the next i mean it's crazy you know you don't it's, you don't hardly get a breather well you're becoming a fast stitcher a little faster and well, you do have you do have some friends that you know stitching models for you which yes, i'm sure yes is a i've great had to relief, you know i just i just cannot um handle that momentum well you know yeah and you you know i can't stay ahead if i don't have somebody else help me stitch right. so and you know like so my friend diane has stitched she's a fabulous stitcher um lisa has stitched uh my friend miriam has stitched so, so i'm not trying to wear people out so i'm <laughs> trying to spread around a little bit you know and, and diane's had had a good long time off to finish some of her stuff and great you know i've warned her i was like it's coming i'm gonna have you <laughs> back back in the saddle pretty soon so, so. anyways yeah yep yeah. All right. Well, you had mentioned um, when we were talking. Oh, yeah. You know, well, Lisa has. Well, Lisa said that, you know, she she's been stitching since high school. That's a really long time when you. Wait, well, I mean, I, well, you know, what? it has been. I'm 63. Yeah. I graduated high school in 1978. Yeah. And so, so I've been stitching even before that. But really actively cross-stitching since that time. Right, and when you come into her house and see her body of work, I mean, there's stuff tucked in in every nook and cranny and corner, you know, and there's just treasures everywhere and beautiful stitching. And, you know, sometimes I, I look at the date and I'm like, oh my gosh, that, you know, was a while ago. That's from the caveman. <laughs> no, no, but, you know, and it's also sort of in, when you, when you walk through a house, you can sort of see the evolution of cross stitch. Now she doesn't have any yeast and whatnot to take right. up, but you know, like in materials and design aesthetics, and I mean, there's a there's sort of a, a history yeah. of uh, you know uh, because the industry really has done some fabulous evolution evolution since, or let's say re coming back to yes. some of the really high quality stitching that was done way back exactly. when, you know, my exactly. way better materials now, but, um, anyway, so, um, one of the things I said, asked her, like, you know, as I'm not a new stitcher, but I'm also not a good stitcher. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm very casual about my stitching and, and, you know, nothing has to be perfect. Um, but I was like, Lisa, what? Share some tips. Yeah. Share some, what are your, some of your best cross stitching tips? Okay, well, I can think of a few right off right off the bat. Um, one of them is well, I do I do finish. Um, I am a finisher. I don't finish for other people right now. That's something I'm considering getting back into. I finished, finished a few me, things for because I was on Sylvia, my knees begging. I used to have when my children were small. I had a finishing business, um, which crazy as it is, I did not advertise at all, and I had. Plenty of finishing to keep me going, to keep me in stitching retreats. Um, but anyway, Important. honestly, before you put your first stitch in a piece, you really need to analyze that piece and decide what you want to do with it, how you want it finished. For instance, if it's a sampler and you think you're not going to um, use mats or right, anything mat. like that, a two inch Two inch margin on your linen is plenty for framing. If you think that you might be using mats, then you probably want to have a three inch margin mm -hmm. on your linen. If you are having things finished into an ornament, a stocking, what have you, you can leave an inch and a half margin. But if you have other things on that same piece of linen that get finished into other smalls, 
you have to leave enough space between the pieces so that they can each piece can be cut with an appropriate seam allowance margin something appropriate for mounting to have that to finish that piece um She's i have to done me. well no you were you were on the edge but <laughs> i have done finishing for people in the past and you know what i i get it but i don't get it where the directions will say leave three inches before stitching the other motif or this is the outline for your layout and people will crunch them together so they can save a little five by five piece of linen to use later to stitch an ornament or something which you know what they probably will never do so i've had pieces that i have had to sew muslin onto them so that it could be wrapped around a piece of mounting board or something so anyway my first tip is plan your finishing before you put your first stitch in it. That's a good one. The other one was something that actually Sylvia and I were talking about it, and then we saw it on Sherry's Colorado Cross Stitcher video that Sylvia's like, well, how do you, how do you, you know, keep from seeing threads dragged behind if you have just like a little dit, dit, dit of stitching, right. like a snowflake or whatever. A little snow, yeah, a little like, something yeah or a little little just the little, little diamonds the little four stitch dot, diamonds, little four stitch you know, diamonds uh, little, yeah, because yeah. it's hard to anchor your thread in the back to adequately keep that from pulling out or right. make it the right tension i know some people do the pin stitch to do that to start each one i just really haven't done that but i learned in a class years and years ago i honestly think it was from lauren sour of um forget me knots and stitches she has beautiful beautiful designs Lauren said to iron a piece of featherweight interfacing on the back of your linen. Like first you can stitch your piece and then save those little dit dit stitches little dots, till yeah. the end. Mm -hmm. And then you iron a piece of featherweight interfacing onto the back of your stitching. You know, make sure your piece is pressed nicely so that you don't get wrinkles in your linen when you're ironing this on. Um, then you iron on a piece of featherweight interfacing and then you can go ahead and stitch those little areas and you can't drag across the whole piece but you can carry your thread From several piece, stitches yeah. mm -hmm. um you know and then maybe end one off and then stitch another little cluster of them somewhere else but it really works to hide your um thread, thread carry thread, thread carries yeah. so the other thing is, which we touched on a little bit earlier, don't be afraid to be creative. Don't be afraid to change colors, to change motifs, to personalize. Um, I always, always personalize a sampler. Um, if it's a reproduction sampler, I still find some place discreet to put my initials, maybe in a very light color, maybe something just a little bit darker than my linen, because Honestly, I think it protects the original stitcher that someone knows it's not the original True. antique sampler. Mm -hmm. um, and it pays tribute to her and respects her or him, the original stitcher. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, those are just a few tips that I have. And just stitch, just stitch, stitch, stitch. I try to put a needle through my linen every day. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always work that way, but it's really something that I strive to since... You know, it's my passion and I know it's many of your passions right, too. Right, right. So anyway, just a few other things I think we have. We have a few fun finds from our Yeah, we're not going to show thing. everything, but, but just a few things that... Um, a few little things that we found. Um, I know a lot of people collect um, flower frogs, flower frogs mm -hmm. to store their scissors and what have you. Well, I found this one the other day. I have never seen one... And it's not broken. It's not broken yeah. at all. No. <laughs> and it's very deep. Yeah. That, I mean, this can accommodate a scissor as is without it putting hitting, it into yeah. something else. Mm -hmm. So my vision for this is that I will find like a little dish or tray that I scoot right into here and have this on my stitching area with a little vintage plate or something, you know, holding my um, needles and you know my needle minder and things like that when i'm Possibly not stitching. a little dolly yes my little <laughs> dollies um but to have this i was ecstatic to find this mm -hmm. and i think it was 14 dollars, which is more than i usually pay for frogs but 
I've never seen one like this. I thought she gave you a discount. Well, she did when okay. I got to the checkout. Yeah. She's like, oh, that's discounted 25%. Woohoo! Thank you very much. <laughs> I knew that. The other thing I found was this doorknob. And in my last video, I showed um, one of Liz Matthews' trees that she does. And they're often mounted in a spool or something like that. But I love to find an old doorknob one that lay that sits flat mm -hmm. and I use the dowel or a stick and I glue that in there and then insert that into the styrofoam of the tree. Super cute vintage finish. And on it that. really is a sturdy hold. It's very yeah, sturdy. So, you know, and that's, you know, yeah. I have cats when I'm watching, they don't knock things over, but sometimes when I'm not watching, they're right on it. So anyway, at least they're respectful of well, let's, me. let's do that one. Oh. Yeah. Then this one store we went into. Well, it was the same store as, as the that, flower frog. This yeah. one store I went into, I did not get more than five feet into the store. Well, she takes a sharp, well, sharp so we're going, she goes a sharp left, you know, cause there's like a, like a display cabinet. Stuff you. Everywhere. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll let her look there and I'll, I'll go in further. So I was looking in, you know, uh, into further in the store. So I'm in there in this little cabinet and I yell, hey, Syl, come, come look and see what you missed. You know? <laughs> come see what you, you missed. You never want to hear that. <laughs> so I found <clears throat> for $4.50, I believe this is ivory all. Mm -hmm. I do. I do too. It's yeah. only about three inches tall. What a great find. It's it's beautiful. And then, I mean, there's even the more tip beautiful is intact. Is the next piece. So then I found this little charmer. Yeah, this really is close probably look at that. three quarters of an inch high. Do you think that's about three quarters of an inch high? Almost an inch. And it has a screw on lid. I'll also show the lid. Yes. Let me hold the lid forward because the little, the little, uh, there's a little oh, hole that's gonna come over up. here. Yeah. This is a little thread holder. You put, this is the, oh, let's see, here. The see lid. now you can see what that's carved on the lid. It's all carved out, and I believe this is ivory also. And this is the little, little thing that goes into it where you wind your thread around. And then you insert the thread through the little hole. There you go, a little hole on the side of this. Mm -hmm. And screw the lid down. Well, the joy this of this, I, I don't know how you had it in there. The joy of this is that there was no, two of them. Yes. And they were $18 yep. Yep. and no yep. discount, but so Sylvia was able to get one too. So we didn't have to like, you know, arm wrestle. Well, I wouldn't have, but no. I would have cried a little. <laughs> We'd have to arm wrestle or do rock, paper, scissors right, right there in the store. But it was great. That was a super yeah. duper find. Yeah. So I have one more thing I'd like to show you. Sylvia gifted me this and this I need your input for. Sylvia gifted me this shuttle. Um, when she arrived the other day, a nice little hostess with the most this gift she gave me. <laughs> well, she is the hostess. And with the um, I will take this. Yeah, you just pop that this right bobbin out. out. Mm -hmm. But I've seen people do these where they stitch a design and then mount it in there. Offhand, I can't really think of ones that I have seen. But if any of you have designs that you have stitched into one of these and put in one of these shuttles, please let me know in the comments and um. You know, if you have any ideas of what you're going to stitch in yours, please let me know because I would love to know what I want to put in mine. I have ideas, but anyways. Okay. Well, there you <laughs> but go. But you know what? I showed this the in my last video. It was a little, um, oh, why is it gone? Um, they used to design and they came back for a little bit, but they Heinz had, it. No, no, uh -huh. no, no, no. The one, they did a lot of over one. Why is it gone out of my... I don't know. You'll think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, it was the uh, uh, sampler. It looked back, but it's actually done in blue. It's a monochromatic, but there's a, there's a scene on top, houses and trees. And that's what I thought of immediately. Like, I'll only, uh, I don't know, oh, like, oh, 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 oh. that was a, um, a kit. Mm, no, it's just no. a chart. It's just the chart. They just came out in the spring or, or maybe last oh. year. They hadn't. Uh, designed in a long time it's a it's a duo oh. it'll come it's like right here but it's not coming out um but anyways i was like hey, think of it at two o'clock in the morning right when right you're you know you could it would so easy to to figure out how many you need and sort of just just expand that scene that's if at idea. all that's a good and idea and it's so so cute you know okay, and i was well, like oh i want to do that. i'll show it when to you, you think again. of it show me i'm stuck on but buttercup but please. it's not her it's not them bright needle 
Oh, it was okay. a BB bright needle. There so, you go. But anyway, I mean, I'll take a look at that, that one. Right, but right. I'm really curious as to what um, all of you put in your or right. I, I mean, there's so many, so many uh, different uh, things. You know, you would just have to measure, and you could just take a a, a portion right of something. You right. know, what look would look also really cute, but you'd have to probably do it over one. Is the sampler folk from Kathy Barrick. Okay, I'll have to check that it's out. It's like, they look like little Dutch people. Oh, okay. You know, super cute. Um, long, it's a really old pattern. Well, yeah, my well, brain. <laughs> show, show your treasures. Okay, and then when, so then I'm we not going to show very much. Then we but, can put them on their way. But I seem to be having good luck with boxes of late, right? Because right. I found the big Bob box. And you found and, mine. Oh, yeah. Well, you should, you can show that one. Um, but I saw, I saw this box. Look down when you're in antique mall. Sometimes there's really good stuff on the floor. Anyway, so here, is this upside? No, it is. So this is a painted box. And, you know, I grabbed it and I was looking at it. And boy, she has, whoever did this has a fabulous faux finish. Oh, you can see it better here. And not only that, she also faux finished on the inside of the lid. Oh, let's see if we can capture that. So, and then, I have a few treasures in here that I'm, Oops. Hold on. Oh. Oh my gosh. You might want to move. Huh? Am I my butt move. just sitting in there? <laughs> Looking out for you, girlfriend. Uh, you don't need to see that. Especially not that long. But it is <laughs> it's finished. Here you go. It's turning all red. We can edit that no, out. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's no. funny. Just go for it. Show them your... <laughs> yeah. So it's finished on the inside like this. And there's no signature or anything like that. Oh, somebody... Well, I don't know. There's something scribbled out right, right here in the corner. But I don't think it's a signature. But anyway, so that's one of the things I grabbed. Um, I will show a little bit more than when I get home. Okay. You know, but this is really All right. And then this is things. a box that Sylvia found for me and sent me for my birthday. Filled with treasures. Filled with treasures. <laughs> with and this things. was an or Orleans Carpenter's box. Uh -huh. Shaker box that was painted. There, I have this in the blue with a smaller one. Okay. Right? But I think there's a smaller one than that. I think there must have been a set of three. That could be. And I'm still looking for the smallest one. Wow. I figure one day I'll find it. But uh, yeah, I found that at an antique mall. And I was like, yes, please. Taking that for my friends. So. Lisa. So now that you've seen my... <laughs> <laughs> The end of things. <laughs> right. This is the end. I do want to say one thing. I know I recorded about two weeks ago and I did have, um, you know, some things I was offering for a giveaway. Um, remember, don't comment with giveaway or prize or mm. a drawing or raffle. But I am not ready to um, select the winners of that yet. So it gives you more time to respond with a comment and remember to other like video. and subscribe mm -hmm. on my other video, uh, Floss Tube number four. I believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so I'm not ready to announce winners of that. We just kind of decided to do this spontaneously today before we go out and maybe have some lunch, hopefully meet with Susan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, there's a few more places that we'd like to check it. out yeah. in town before Sylvia goes home tomorrow. tomorrow so come. if we do have a chance with, to meet with Susan later, we will attach, like, we want to do a little small video um, shop. just a little, mm -hmm. not really talking so much, but just a video of her shop that's up and coming as it's coming along. So yeah. anyway, until the next time, my friends, may you find calm, peace and relaxation in your stitches and stay happy, healthy and terrific until we see each other again. Bye. Bye. -bye. You get it?